so right now we are done with configuring our dispatcher servlet so as i said dispatcher servlet was our front controller and we have completed configuring this thing and during our development time we have created a you know a configuration file a spring configuration file called dad hyphen front controller hyphen servlet dot xml where we will be actually configuring uh, you know a lot of things for our application like component scanning like bean creation like uh, auto wearing and a lot of stuff right we'll be doing those things right over here okay just like your spring core okay so we will be getting back to that particular point and we'll be seeing everything in action but right now the interesting thing that we are going to do is we are going to create few controllers we have created our font controller here in the web.xml file right now let's create some controllers so if we go back to our example so probably this so here we have done with creating this thing now let's create few controllers like mom controller sys controller bro controller and let's map them with slash sugar slash makeup slash cricket back let's create the same example here right i uh, will have a lot of fun while doing it because this is pretty simple looks pretty funny and obviously this is not a real time example but you know this example will make you comfortable with spring mbc then you can create thousands number of real time examples right you don't need me or you know you don't need help from me at that time right trust me whenever i'm saying it the goal is to learn the things right and after that once you once you have your basics clear everything will be simple yes. for you so right now let's go back to our uh, sts right okay here what i'm going to do right now i'm going to create few controllers so i'm going to go to java resources and here i'm going to go to src and in src right now i'm going to create a package let's say right now the package name is home.com let's say com.home.controllers so we are going to place all our controllers here in this package so the first controller that we are going to create is let's say i want to create this controller let's say uh, we we have discussed like this there is mom right so let's create a mom controller <laughs> okay so i'm going to do a right click here new class controllers are basically java classes and we'll, we'll uh, i'll say it mom controllers mom controller okay and i'll do a finish and my controller is created okay so let me maximize it okay now my controller is created so how to make this thing as a controller how to you know how to tell spring that this is a controller okay so the way we are going to tell spring hey this is a controller by marking it as with a controller annotation so i'll just say at controller here at controller and i just you know use this particular uh, import here coming from or the spring framework the stereotype just use it now this this particular class became a controller okay so add controller annotation is basically tell spring that hey this particular class is not a normal class this is a controller class okay so the next thing is this is pretty interesting i will tell you one thing you know about add component annotation right we have studied the add component annotation uh, during our spring core course and what is add component annotation uh, what what was the job of add component annotation could you please remember that if you know the job of add component annotation this annotation is as similar as add component annotation do you get that so let's say instead of add controller if i'm writing add component here what does it mean can you tell me one thing what does it mean right now add component i have just added add component here so what this add component annotation is going to do could you please tell me that yes you are right add component annotation we used to use because when we wanted to tell spring that hey spring please create the object for mom controller and place it inside your container right so so that my my class object i don't need to create you create my class object right at that time we used to use add component annotation and also we used to activate the component scanning in our spring configuration file 
For an example, if I want Spring to create the cl this class object, if I want Spring to create an object for mom controller class, then what I will do, I will basically go to the configuration file. For in this case, my configuration file name is dad front controller hyphen server.xml. If I'll go here and here what I'll do, I will activate the context colon component scan. And here I'll define the base package. For an example, if I'll go here, which package this mom controller class present? If I do link with editor here, this symbol, now it will tell me where which package it is in. Now see, mom controller, uh, this particular class is there inside this particular package called com.home.controllers. So I need to basically you know, uh, put this particular package as a best package in my component scan tag, right? So let me go here uh, to my uh, bin configuration file and inside the best package I can say com.home.controllers. Okay, now what will happen? Whenever Spring will load this particular file, it is going to see, okay, so the developers is not manually configuring the bean, rather he is using the annotation approach. So he is go to this particular package. Where, where this particular package is there? Now this particular package is here, right? Inside this particular package, whatever the class is finds with a add component annotation, it will create the object for those particular classes and will place those object inside the spring container right that's what add component annotation does and guys the same thing will happen whenever there will be a add controller annotation there is nothing new in it only the new thing here is that this mom controller is basically a controller and you know we are using it for our web project right that's why we're marking that with add controller annotation but spring will create the object for this particular class automatically. Same thing, whenever Spring is going to load this particular file, at that time it will say, okay, uh, there is a component scan, that means the developer is using the annotation approach. So right now I'm going to scan this particular package, com.home.controllers, it will go to this particular package called com.home.controllers. Now it find this class. Now he said, okay, this particular class does have a add controller annotation, that means I will create the object for this particular class or I will initialize this particular class and once I initialize I will place this object inside my container. Okay great so right now we have created a controller successfully congratulations and now here I will create a method. Let's say I'll create a method here public. Let's say my method will return some string data. And, and let's say this method name is give sugar. Okay, sugar. And there we go. Okay. And let's return a string here called, uh, okay, here is your sugar. <laughs> Just returning a string back. So this particular method will be called when, okay? So if you see again this example, I want to map this controller with a URL called slash sugar, okay? So this particular controller will handle a request called slash sugar. So what I'll do here, here in this method, I'll put a you know, annotation called request mapping. And I will map it to a URL called slash sugar okay so whenever somebody will you know in the url if somebody somebody is going to hit home.com slash sugar then this particular method will be executed and it is going to return a string said okay here is your sugar okay guys so here one more thing so whatever we are expecting right now if somebody is going to hit slash sugar we want to show him this particular data in his web browser but this thing will not happen and to make it happen we need to use a another annotation called response body right response body what this response body annotation will do it is basically gonna 
write this particular message in in your http response so whenever somebody is giving us a http request by hitting slash sugar we are going to execute this particular method okay because it is mapped with a url called slash sugar and then we are going to give him a response back we are going to write in his response body a message that okay here is your sugar this message we are going to write in his response that's why we are using a annotation here called at response body okay now let's do a control s and we are done writing our controller and we have successfully created a controller which handles a request called slash sugar sugar so right now let me run this particular project again i'll do right click run as run on server let me deploy this project here in the tomcat again and i'll do finish here so i'll say uh, restart the server and obviously my server will be started without any error that is my confidence on myself <laughs> so so let me see the console no error that's good now i'm going to hit slash sugar here okay Right now let's go ahead and hit that URL home.com slash sugar right home.com is going to come from my dispatcher servlet because I my URL pattern should be starts from home.com then I'm going to hit whatever the controller I have written here uh, mom controller here this particular method is handling a request called slash sugar so I'll write home.com slash sugar then I can expect this particular method to execute okay so now let me go here and let me write home.com slash sugar enter there you go okay here is your sugar so this particular message is coming from where if you see here here only you have written that particular message correct okay but one thing is confusing here so home.com is my project name that's why Again, home.com is coming here. Home.com is my project name. So here it is coming. Localhost 8080 slash home.com. Okay. Then I'm writing home.com slash sugar. It doesn't look good. So let me try changing my project name. So let me do right click, refactor, rename. Let me say this. My first web, my first MVC project. Okay, now this will make sense to you. Okay, right now I changed my project name to my first MVC project. And now let me run this particular application again. And this time it will not be confusing because home.com slash home.com slash sugar that doesn't make any sense. Now let's see the URL http colon double slash localhost 8080 is your port number. Then your project name, my first MVC project. Now I'm going to hit home.com. This is the URL my dispatcher server is going to handle. Then slash sugar. This is my controller is mapped with slash sugar, right? So here in my mom controller is maps with a request called slash sugar. So let me hit that here slash sugar and enter. And there I go. Okay, here is your sugar, right? Congratulations. We have actually uh, created a spring mvc project and we made it up and running good job guys okay so we have created our first spring mvc project and we made it work and we are actually doing things uh, the way we have shown it in the presentation right so right now our mom controller is ready and in our mom controller we have created a method which is basically going to handle this request called slash sugar so right now let's create few more controller like sys controller bro controller and let's you know map with slash mac up to sys controller and let's map slash cricket back to the pro controller 
So to do that, what I'm going to do, I'll go to my STS again. And right now, let me close all these uh, things here. And like my mom controller, I'm going to create a new controller here. Right click, new uh, class. Let's say this bro controller. Okay, I'll hit enter and my controller class is created. So now to make Spring know this is a controller, first of all, again, I'm going to write here at controller annotation. And inside this bro controller, I'm going to create a method public string um, give cricket back, right? That's what we have seen in our example, right? Uh, if we see here, slash cricket bat, we want to map it to, and this guy is going to give us back a cricket bat, right? So let me go to STS again, and let me say return, hey man, uh, okay, this is your cricket bat, okay, cool. Let's give a semicolon here. Okay, so now this method will be executed when somebody will fire a URL, let's say request mapping, and the URL will be, let's say, slash cricket bat, right? When somebody will be hitting home.com slash cricket bat, then this particular method will be executed, and this particular string will be returned to his browser, okay? And to make it happen, to write this particular message to the HTTP response body, what I will do, I will use the annotation called at response body, correct? Now I will do control S. Okay, so that's it. So I am done writing this controller method right now. And right now what I will do, let me again redeploy it to my Tomcat server. So I will do right click, run as, run on server. I will do next and finish. So my server will be up and running once and after that I can test this URLs, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll go over here, I'll say slash home.com slash sugar. Okay, this is working. Okay, here is your sugar. Right now, let's do slash cricket pad. C-R-I-C-K-8-T, cricket pad. Okay, there you go. Hey man, this is your cricket pad. Cool. We have successfully created two different controllers and we know right now how to actually create a controller by using the add controller annotation. And if we want to make uh, anything printed with the HTTP response body, then what we can do actually, we can use the annotation called add response body, right? Pretty simple. Right now, let's break the theory. Let's understand some fundamental and let's try to break all this theory step by step and let's be a guru on Spring MBC. That's coming up right now.